Pop off the shielding to access the lamp power connectors. Now on every screen you're going to have a few of these connectors. These are the uh, power connectors that uh, you know, power up the backlight and all that. Um, you'll notice there's two connectors there. One's marked with a red marker and the other is just, you know, black marker. And what that does is it um, allows you to remember which one went on which side and uh, you can also mix them up with the ones on the other side of the screen. So it just gives you a surefire way of lining it up. This part can always be a little bit tricky. There should be two little pins on the side that you push and pull back. Um, sometimes that can be an absolute challenge. Sometimes the screen lifts up and uh, conceals it. Uh, let's see if I can do this without blocking the camera. There we go. power inverter is connected to the video board by a small cable. Uh, this should pull out easily, however I had issues on this particular screen. So instead I chose to leave it connected and just flip over the power inverter board and work on it like that. If you examine the capacitors, you'll notice that these two are swollen on the top. And over on the left, you'll notice that these ones have a bit of goo coming out as well. This is a clear sign that they've gone bad and need to be replaced. You'll also notice a large high voltage capacitor on the other side. I've never seen one of these go bad in all my days. So save your money and leave this one in place. And you should also be careful around it because it can store a large amount of energy and it uh, should really be left for a few days to discharge on its own. Or you can build a very simple circuit that will discharge it in a few seconds. Uh, it all depends on your preference. At this point I've only pulled out two caps, but as you can see there's three sockets there for a capacitor. Um, the reason for that is because there's a few extras on there that uh, I guess weren't needed in this revision or model, so I left them empty. Um, what I'm going to do so I don't get confused in this whole process is just uh, X out that one. That one was already kind of X'd out, but now there's no uh, chance I can accidentally put a capacitor in there and just uh, screw up the whole thing. Uh, at this point, as I said before, I had two pulled out. 
I'm going to make sure I put those in place before I pull this out. This here is uh, desoldered and ready to pull, but uh, like I said, I don't want to get mixed up and put something in the wrong spot. So I've got two 820 microfarads at uh, 25 volts, and uh, let's get it in. So uh, the white band is going to point towards the little uh, crisscross inside. Um, if you're ever not sure, you can just look at the other ones that were already on, were already on there and uh, follow what they say. Uh, sometimes you'll get a little plus icon there, so that's the uh, the longer leg. And I almost put that in backwards. There we go. So those are in. I just want to flip this over now. Oh, camera's in the way. I'll flip these over, and I'm just gonna bend these legs in different directions. And that's just to hold them in place. Now I can pull out this bugger.
so I'll clean those up a little better once uh, the camera's not my way. And uh, I also need to take uh, a cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol to each of those solder joints just to clean up any flux that might be left on there. You don't want to leave any flux behind that will corrode the board. It is acidic, so uh, don't do that. I always remove it with some uh, flux remover, ideally, or uh, if you don't have any, you can always use some rubbing alcohol instead. So now we get to put it back together, see if it works. When you put the power inverter back in, make sure this one edge goes in on an angle like that, and then you put down the other side. So one piece that I forgot to put back in place was this little metal shield here, which wedges in between the black power connector and the power inverter board. Uh, you'll notice that the edge is hooked, so you got to put it in at a 45 degree angle and then bend it in place so that the screw hole lines up with the one on the power inverter. You may need to use your fingers and really push it into place. I had to kind of do it out of camera because I just couldn't do it at that angle. Uh, once you've done that, you can line up the screw hole perfectly. Then just grab your screw, put it in place. I'll zoom in nice and close here for you. So screw the screw in place. And I'll just pull the camera back here and show you how it looks once it's in place. So you'll see that strip of metal there underneath the black uh, power connector. It just stops any uh, dust from getting in there and holds the power connector properly in place. And that's it. Don't forget to put this metal shielding back on. This is one of the things that's just kind of snapped into place. So you've really got to be careful to get all four little connectors lined up perfectly. And then just slide it in place. And you'll go from the left to the right. After you've done a test and made sure that this whole thing does work, go ahead and put the back panel back in place. This will hold everything in. Um, this is the most tedious part to remove, so really make sure it works before you put this back on. So you don't want to have to get out your prying tools and spend another half an hour getting it apart. But once you put it on, uh, just go around the edges, snap it all in place, make sure it's nice and secure. And then you can put the four screws in the back and the three on the bottom. If you'd like to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.